should you poll in 4.3? That's what I'll be telling you today. Let's get into it. Gorgeous blonde Navia. Her pull value for starters? It's not huge from the get-go as she's primarily a carry unit. We already have a bunch of those to choose from. Of course, as a carry, she's quite solid. I bet you'll have decent numbers it's over 9, and will be the best choice for a Geo DPS. Not only that, but she can serve as a sub DPS as well. This means she can play some rather unique comps and isn't only restricted to one or two which is fairly standard for most carry units. So even if her numbers aren't through the roof, she compensates by being good in many different areas. This raises her value by a bit. Lovely choice for dual carry comps. Usually these aren't too hot since field time is a precious resource. But Navia, she's a complete nuke. And she needs very little time to do her thing. As for me, I'll be keeping her as a carry. I want to enjoy that gorgeous design. You can also use 4-piece Archaic Petra on her for a more supportive role, which is a cool plus. As for her meta position, let's put her in A tier. Her DPS is formidable. I believe she'll even beat Alhytham's personal numbers. She doesn't fully dethrone Mr. Flicker, since his teams will deal more DPS. That's because of the supports he uses, such as Yolan and Nahida to name an example. Navia, while strong, doesn't have any insane support in particular. This is a double-edged sword, since while she works with whoever you have on hand, there's no unit to push her potential to the top. Carries usually like that, such as C6 Varuzan for Wanderer or Goro for Ito Geo. It does make her more flexible though. Very comfy unit to play so far. Being flexible really is a blessing. She doesn't need Goro either, meaning she's not tied to any specific restrictions, and her potential isn't held back by supports either. What about competition? None in the Geo niche. Navia takes the crown as Genshin's new best Geo DPS. She completely clowns on Ito. Poor dude doesn't hold a candle to her in the slightest. She works in a lot more teams to great effect. Meanwhile, Ito stuck to Mono Geo only. For real? I'd say she's tied Zhongli as the current best Geo unit. Offers a very powerful kit despite her element and is worth using in colorful comps. Navia actually elevates Geo's pull value as a whole. Now units like Albedo finally have a best in slot use case, and Zhongli has another slot where he's properly appreciated. Investment wise, okay, she's a carry. Expect to spend at least two to three months or more on artifacts. Tiny since these sort of units always need a good build to function at their finest. You don't need crazy gear though, why pull for that axe when Serpent's Spine exists, especially at R5? Plus, her cons are mid, not a great C2 for a carry unit, and yes, while she has many teams, her 4 star only ones aren't too hot. All 4 star sub DPSs and other viable supports fall off hard against Albedo and Zhongli. Both of these units will always be Navia's best partner in crime. She may not have a crazy support, but these two are the closest. And really, she's much better with investment. Pick her up if you're down for an excellent flexible Geo DPS. Yet note that you'll have to work hard on investment or set performance. Now onto our Frost Flake Queen. How does Ayaka hold up? Her pull value is pretty low in today's meta. She only has two teams. Freeze and Mono Cryo. When it comes to Freeze, we have far cheaper AoE options nowadays, such as Bloom, and Mono Cryo is only good if you have Shenha. It's a team built on forcing a well invested Ayaka into all kinds of content. If you're only looking for hyper carry power, Noivalet's a much better choice. As for ranking, let's say A tier behind Navia. Ayaka does deal with mobbing content better than most units. Her burst hits in a wide radius and enemies can't move. Her teams also always consist of grouping, usually in the form of Kazuha. Kokomi makes Ayaka teams comfortable to use as well. Her boss killing abilities? Not the greatest at C0, especially at lower investment levels. Freeze is an AoE team, so it falls off completely in single target, so then your only option left is Mono Cryo. Competition wise, Noiva lets her main contest. He simply does far more DPS with a lot more efficiency. Nice that he isn't burst based. Yet, does this mean Ayaka has nothing to stick to her competition? No, after all, she has one huge trump card. Her forehead <laughs> being front-loaded, massively front-loaded. 
She can slap out one million damage in only five seconds. And then has the rest of her rotation free to funnel, refresh buffs, and go to the toilet. This is a quality that gives units a lot of edge. Something her kit does great is rendering her enemies totally unable to move, lets her burst land in full, and is an extremely chill way to play. Ahem. If you tried to push Ayaka in single target, then she has to compete with Reesley. Jailman's best teams are nothing short of ridiculous. Get that guy C1 and you'll be blowing things up. He has access to some very heavy impact teams, namely how well he takes advantage of Farina. Ayaka versus Reese in single target, let's just say it's not even close. Reese's puffs will destroy Ayaka in boss scenarios. What about investment? Oh, boy. Ayaka needs at least a misplitter. Not want, need. I've got some calcs to back it up. Here's Ayaka with a Kageyuchi versus misplitter in a moderate team. Yeah, the free-to-play weapon's not doing too hot. And here's Ayaka in a free-to-play team versus mid-investment team versus huge investment team. All use Miss Splitter. You can clearly see how vital high investment is on Ayaka here. Her C2 also offers a lot more area and damage with her burst. Without it, she definitely struggles more with boss content. She will suck everywhere if you don't use Miss Splitter on her. End of story, sadly. Shen has also a massive buff to Ayaka. If you want Cryo to even think about being competitive with top teams, you need her. So while Ayaka used to be a top free-to-play pick, as time went on we've gotten far more accessible cheap options that do a lot more DPS for a lot less. Hold it! If you're enjoying the video, why not consider liking and subscribing? Maybe even leave a cool comment down below. If you do, you get to spend some quality time with the waifu of your choice. Moving on. Speaking of quality waifus, Raiden Shokun. She has a very high pull value right from the get-go. First off, plenty of teams. Hyper Bloom, Double Hydro, Aggravate, Hyper, and uh, Rational. If you're still in 2021, all these teams are quite abyss competitive. You'll be able to clear comfortably with every team she uses. Her playstyle is also super easy to pick up and understand. So that makes said teams very accessible. She also does a lot of things. You need someone to apply Electro in a wide range for Hyper Bloom? Done. You need a powerful blast of Electro DPS? Done. Your team is suffering from severe energy issues? Her favorite. And let's not forget she's an amazing driver without a license. Yet she still cooks. Uh, somewhat. Something nuts that people overlook nowadays is her burst damage bonus. Her skill can provide up to 28% to your entire team. That's huge. Raiden even has niche use cases, such as a superconduct unit. I think we can all agree when I say Raiden has it all. Being able to double as a utility unit and DPS is huge, especially in this case, since I want to emphasize, Raiden is great in all these scenarios. She's no mid jack of all trades. 200 to 300k initial slashes are no party trick. In this batch of characters, I'm ranking her at S tier. Of course, damage-wise, Raiden's fallen off. There are new teams which out-damage her. Noivalet again! What a surprise! You fret not. Farina's release has breathed new life into Raiden's team options. Before, Raiden was the best driver for double hydro teams. Now that Farina's shook up the core and replaced Short's boy for good in that team, Raiden's a competitive driver again. As for competition, Raiden is actually too unique to compare with other Electro units. Everything her kit provides is distinctively hers. No other Electro is in the same class as her. Plus, all Electro units have their own very unique set playstyle. That's not me saying Raiden is better than them all. Yai will be a better aggravate DPS, for example. Fischl is a more flexible battery because she needs no field time. But what Raiden does on her own is very unique. The closest comparison would be Sino, yet that's still an unfair comparison, since Sino is a cold hard hyper carry and Raiden has utility, so there's no point in comparing them value wise. Investment wise, super free to play friendly. We've all heard of a legendary catch by now, and Dragon's Bane covers all her hyper blooming needs. She works with so many 5 stars to the point where it's ridiculous, so chances are she works well with somebody already in your roster. Her C2-3 are also some of the finest investments you could make on your account. 
would recommend, especially if you love damage. Even then, she's extremely cheap rolls as an enabler. Stick her on a bunch of EM, and then you're golden. Makes her wonderful for new players. A great choice for players of all kinds. Happy fireworks, girl! What's there not to love? Well, her pull value, unfortunately, it isn't the highest. She's completely locked a single target, which isn't a good look on carries nowadays. Units like Alhaifem and Noivalet deal well in both categories, and while Linny is single target, he offers some AoE capabilities. When a unit is only good at one thing, they have to be really good to compensate. Sadly, Yoimiya's DPS is lackluster. At C0, she's within 5-10% of a Hu Tao at C0. Sounds good, yes? Not when you consider that Hu Tao has fallen off as well, by quite an amount, so by modern standards, her DPS isn't much. Yoimiya also doesn't have an S tier C1 to carry her. Gonna have to rank her a B tier. Beautiful waifu, not so beautiful damage. Because of this, Yoimiya's best teams aren't centered around her own damage. It's much better to have her drive the Farina and Yolan double hydro core. Stick Baiji on the end as a healer for Farina and shield her for Yoimiya's interruption res. But even in this role, you've got other better choices. Competing with Linny is absolutely unfeasible. He's one of the best hyper carries in the game right now. That makes him the strongest pyro DPS. She also competes directly with Hu Tao for the driver role. Tao's better, unless she can't play her properly at C0. Yoimiya also has no gimmicks which make her great in a specific niche, so no reason to choose her specifically over her pyro competition, aside from fun fireworks. You only take Yoimiya over Linny if you're after ease of use. Investment-wise, good news! She's very cheap to play. Yoimiya doesn't need cons. Hers aren't that good, and her kit feels complete at C0. Unlike Hu Tao, the Yalan Farina combo really up her performance. And Yoimiya's got a great signature weapon. Even better, she's compatible with many of the five-star bows in game right now, so you aren't compelled to pull for Sig if you don't want to. R5 Rust is also splendid. I think this is Yoimiya's biggest quality. High accessibility. Anyone can easily play and make full use of her kit. The final verdict is... Pull for Raiden if you don't have her. Obviously. The Electro Archon is one of the most flexible units in game with great power to boot. Get her. And if you already own a Shogun, C2-3 to couldn't hurt. All right, what if you're already that far? Then Navia is your next best bet, shaking up the Geo playstyle with a bang. Strong, unique kit, comfy to use, and the new best Geo DPS. Being a sub DPS as well means she has a longer shelf life than most carries. Ayaka, Paul Noivalet instead, or any other great hyper carry. What she offers isn't much nowadays, but if it's freeze and specific you want, go for it. Only if you're willing to get Misplitter and Shenho though. Don't bother if you've only got free to play supports. Yoi Mia? Get Linny. He's an infinitely better pyro DPS than both Yoi and Tao combined. But if you want a driver for Furry Double Hydro and want ease of use, then Yoi Mia will be the right pick for you. Hopefully, this video is able to help you decide who to pull in patch 4.3. This has been Juice, signing out, and I wish you all luck on the banner of your choice.